During World War II, Britain was at a disadvantage because the German military implemented the use of U-boats. At this time, Britain was dependent on the imports of food and supplies from other allied countries. Unarmed merchant ships delivered 30 million tons of food and supplies each year. German U-boats destroyed 2,780 allied ships. Churchill was terrified and Hitler believed that U-boats would win Germany the war. The German submarines would go out to sea and receive their orders in code and through radio messages. The messages were coded by a machine called the Enigma. It had 26 normal keys and 26 lettered lights. When a key was pressed, an electrical current traveled through three wheels and would turn one of the wheels a notch and that would decipher the code. The enciphered letter would light up and they would send off the encrypted message letter by letter in Morse code by radio. On the receiving end, they simply typed in the coded message onto their Enigma keyboard, and the original message would show up on the lighted letter board. So if I wanted to send the word math, I'd type in M-A-T-H, and then a coded version of that word would pop up on the lighted letter board. Let's say it lights up as A-S-D-F. And so I would send that off by radio, and then my German friends would get that on their submarine and then they'd type in ASDF and it would light up as M-A-T-H. By changing notches and settings, millions of permutations could be created. Even if the British managed to figure out the code by chance one day, the Germans often changed the settings every day, and sometimes as often as every six hours. This is where Alan Turing comes in but he wasn't really Britain's idea of the prime candidate to crack the Enigma code. At this time in Britain, engineers and mathematicians were seen as unimportant. There was a misconception that deciphering the code would be accomplished by a linguist, which was not the case because there was no pattern or logic in the setting of the machine. The British Army created the Government Code and Cipher School, known as GC and CS. They hired historians, masters in Latin and Greek, strategists and scholars in medieval German. Mathematicians were considered disposable and were not exempt from battle. They hired a handful of mathematicians and Alan Turing was selected from Cambridge. Within the first few weeks of the war, Turing designed what would be referred to as the bomb. This was a high-speed electromechanical machine for testing every possible setting of the Enigma. As you can suspect, not even a machine could sort through the millions of possible settings to match an intercepted coded message. This is where Turing began to use statistics to narrow down the possible settings, so they could decipher the messages before the Germans reset the Enigma. Turing realized he couldn't compare the possibilities or create a system without having a unit of measurement. He created what he called a band. This was about the smallest change in weight of evidence that is directly perceptible to human intuition. One ban represented the odds of 10 to 1 in favor of a guess. However, Turing often dealt in smaller quantities, like decibands and centibands. Turing used bands to discriminate between sequential hypotheses, and bands allowed Turing to, di to identify how much information he needed to solve a particular problem. They were actually dubbed bands because Turing and his partners had to match up messages using strips of paper that were printed in the nearby town of Banbury. Each band made a hypothesis ten times more likely. Turing's invention of the band is similar to a, an aspect of statistics we can find in our AP stat book. Bayes' rule has always been controversial in the world of statistics because it employs a use of past experience and many claim its subjectivity can create problems. The rule in its simplest form reads as this. The probability of A given that B is true equals the probability of B given A is true multiplied by the probability of A over the probability of B. Using this rule, you can interpret the degree of belief. Using a Bayesian inference... You can update the probability of a hypothesis based on new evidence you gather. As you know, the faster Turing could update the probability of the millions of permutations the more lives he was saving. He collected his evidence for the probability of a given hypothesis by matching up letter combinations, which all had to be done by hand. 
They also found the most common letter combinations in the German language, which allowed them to narrow down the correct settings. Also, learning common words and phrases and messages such as Hail Hitler or the spelling out of numbers allowed them to find matches more quickly. They were able to update the bomb machine to test hypotheses that were more likely, making it faster to find the right setting. He was also aided by taking code books from German ships to help him develop the Banbarism system. German ciphers got more and more advanced, so the GC and CS had to stay on top of the advances. It was also important that they hid the fact that they knew how to decrypt the code, so they had to identify and destroy the maximum number of U-boats without being suspicious. Banbarisms were also used to crack the Lorenz cipher, another German code, later in the war. Alan Turing's contribution to Britain is thought to have saved millions of lives and may have ended the war years sooner. So even though something like the Bayes equation seems like a very two-dimensional equation that we only mention briefly in one class period, Alan Turing used Bayesian inferences to defeat the entire German Navy and offered one of the biggest contributions to the Allied forces during World War II. That's right, guys. Statistics won the war. Mm-hmm.